to Pitt. Swing and a miss. Stuck him out. The Philadelphia Phillies are 2008 World Champions of Baseball. Brad Lynch does it again and stays perfect for the 2008 season. 48 for 48 in save opportunities. And what the city celebrate. Aloha and hello out there, everybody. What's going on? I am Miho from the Too Close to Call podcast, joined as always with my co-host Pags. Not sure where he is on your screen, first time doing this, but we're getting that Skype game involved, going live with the video as well as the audio here for your Philly Fanatics podcast. Unfortunately, we're coming to you with a little bit of a down vibe for this first video, so bear with us. It is... Not a strong weekend out in L.A. Why are we choosing to start this after a shit weekend? The month of June comes around, you know, I have ideas popping in my head, and I'm thinking, hey, let's do this if we can. Let's see what happens here. See how we roll, talking face, talking to the phone. And the Phillies are like, no, you're not going to have anything to talk about. But game one, man, doesn't start well. That's Jake Arietta's start, I believe. Yeah, man, five innings pitch, five earned runs. Not what you need out of our second best pitcher, if I will. Depends, man. That's up for debate. Arietta goes to five and five here with five runs and five innings. He got hurt by the long ball, if I'm remembering correctly, back to game one. Seeger hit a home run. Muncie hit a home run. As we touched on, left-handed launch angle, guys. And it bit us in the ass, game one. Uh- I'll just stop you right there. The long ball is a reoccurring theme in this podcast. Yeah, as well as from the bullpen. Pretty ridiculous. But two runs for L.A. in the third. The Phillies strike back, tied at two in the top of the fifth with uh, a run in the fourth and a run in the fifth. And that's when L.A. comes with the three spot. Arietta doesn't have that shutdown inning you need after the two spot getting you back in it. It's tough to see, not how you wanted to start the series, and uh, unfortunately, it kind of spiraled from here. Scott Kingery, the only bright spot there with two hits. He was in center field yet again, played a little bit of third base as well, I believe. Harper cools off, so you were right to not hop totally on board, I believe. Pags, what were your thoughts there watching him this weekend? He was rolling here and kind of struggled in the first game second game he got a dinger obviously yeah he had the big hit man tied him at three in the top of the eighth it was three to one at that point and he hit a ball that was inner half out to left center so it was nice to see that type of swing path for him and not totally bailing with everything to right field yeah man it was nice to see that and uh i thought maybe they'd get a win there but unfortunately they had other plans they had other plans and hector neris in the bullpen but Harper was the only guy, him and Scott Kingery, he had two hits again, so that's two games in a row where he had a couple of hits. Man, he stays hot, and he's got to stay in the lineup, so they got to continue to find ways to uh, let him get at bats. For sure, and this is the game they used the opener. Yeah, what were your thoughts about that when you first read it? What were you up to this weekend when you heard Jose Alvarez was going to start instead of Zach Eflin, who's now on the 10-day injured list? I actually didn't hate it. I'd rather that than send Cole Irvin out there to get massacred for five, six innings. I mean, go bullpen by committee. And Alvarez went two innings, no hits, no runs. I guess my thought is maybe you can enlighten me since you're a big Sabermetrics analytics guy. That what's the difference if you go Alvarez the first two, Irvin the next three, compared to Irvin the first three, and then Alvarez? Like, you go to the bullpen in the fourth inning as opposed to like already going and going back. Like, what is is that a mental thing for the other team? Or it's the same guys, man, for the same amount of innings. What's the difference, first or last? I think you're hoping that your offense jumps out to a quick start right there with uh, two shutout innings by your bullpen, and then you get a three, four run lead, and the other guy could come in and kind of cruise because he doesn't have that much pressure on him. So you're thinking Alvarez, they trust a little bit more than Irvin in that spot, so they were trying to get ahead early before Irvin as opposed to going down 3 nothing early on. And if you trust Alvarez more than Irvin, you're getting – the guy you trust against their top six, seven batters right off the bat there. 
Right off the bat, and he answered the bell, man. He's coming around. His ERA is all the way down to 3-5 for the year. So can't keep hitting on Alvarez as he's throwing up these zeros. Cole Irvin, as we mentioned, three and two-thirds. He did give up a couple of runs. Let's see here. I believe it was the long ball yet again. Freeze hit a home run in the fifth. Uh, Hernandez had a single, and then Smith, the walk-off later. So a couple of home runs, and then after Irvin, Velasquez... Gave up an unearned run, but not smooth again, kind of in that bullpen role. And then Dominguez and Neris. So your thoughts on Vinny Velo as we're seeing him now here a couple of times out of the bullpen. I get confused by him because you have the stuff to just throw past people. And he continues to throw these breaking balls that don't work. And I'm like, Vinny, you have the stuff to fucking blow by these people. And it just doesn't. Well, dude, down the middle, 95, 96 to these guys is every day breakfast, man. Like, they're just going to munch on that. I understand that. that, But can he throw the corners and stuff? Can he? Or is that when he gets in trouble? Well, that's what we've seen when he tries to nibble. You know, he walks guys, and then it's a two-run homer instead of a solo shot. He's got that Pavetta syndrome, man, where they just, they throw hard. It's a little straight. And unless you can kind of pick and choose your spots... Uh, you're going to get hit. So that's where they're hoping with two pitches and three batters, you can get away with a miss or two. It's over the course of, you know, facing 20 to 25 hitters in a ball game where you're going to be exposed. So that was the game you needed, though, was game two with the big home run from Bryce, tying it up in the eighth inning. You're going to the ninth. You have ninth inning Naris coming into the game feeling good and knowing that tomorrow Pavetta doesn't line up very well with these guys and, there it was, man, the freaking dagger that always happens out west, and you wake up the next morning, oh, how'd it go? Oh, great, I'm glad I didn't stay up for that, because I would have been pissed. Yeah, man. I always think of you, and it's like close game, it's like, all right, I'm happy right now, the only thing that's going to happen is I'm going to get pissed, and I'd rather <laughs> just wake up pissed than go to bed pissed. <laughs> I was like, I'm not watching, because if they blow it, I don't want to see it anyway. So exactly. that's how we're working. And in yesterday's game, Sunday matinee, four o'clock, the offense never got off the bus. No, I was umpiring softball and I got on the radio and I think it was like the fifth inning and um, Fransky goes, and it's the first time the Phillies have gotten on second base. And I'm like, this yeah, is good. <laughs> Pavetta actually had a good start, man. He held a minute. He did his job. He fought. You know, he, he had some base runners on, but he didn't walk anybody, which to me and that type of a lineup, I was impressed with because he was challenging guys trying to work ahead of hitters. Again, you could see he was a little bit lower on a tick or two on his fastball because he was trying to stay in the zone. And he's still got the stuff, if you read the box score, for nine strikeouts. Like, you're not even going full bore every time, and you're still sitting down nine people in six innings, so you get ahead of hitters. All of a sudden, that curveball's a hell of a lot better, one-two, than it is two-one. You get a few more swings and misses, and and things kind of fall your way. So six scoreless from Pavetta. Encouraging Pags, how we feeling there, man, after what I said was going to be a poo-poo start. He shoved it in my face. It's very encouraging to see him throw against a good lineup and hold his own for six innings. I hope we continue to get starts like that from him. I mean, it sure seems like getting sent down helped him out because, in, like we said in his first start, he got – what was the word you used? Oh, he got dry, dry humped. Dry humped. Yes. In the first time you start. Yes. It, uh, Since then, that's 11 scoreless, see. right? 10 scoreless. Yeah, man. Since the yeah, first so inning back. And- what are your thoughts on – Two outs, Cesar gets double, they walk Franco, Pavetta's due up. It's a 0-0 game. I understand Gabe's thoughts are like, all right, we got first and second here. We need to try to score some runs right here. They put Goslin in, Goslin pops out, and then the bullpen just goes to shit. That's the tough spot, like you said, is knowing who's available and who you're going to have to use. This is where Gabe gets in a tough spot, Pax, because you have to manage the here and now as well as the long term for this team, right? So potentially today in this moment, it would have benefited the Phillies for Pavetta to go out there and try to get to a seventh inning. However, for Nick Pavetta's psyche and potentially for him the rest of the year, six shutout innings of three hit ball with nine strikeouts on the road may do wonders for this kid against the best team in the National League. Like, hey, you just did it against the best, so clearly it's there. No more excuses. 
And yeah. you talked about when they ran out, I believe it was Eikhoff, who then gave out the home run, and all of a sudden that line reads a little bit differently. I do think Gabe thought about that, and he's going to Velasquez, so he's feeling pretty good. But that one did not turn out so good this time. couple of walks. It did not work out well. End up losing 8 nothing. Offense never gets a run on the board again. So I Garcia. guess it didn't really matter, but that'll win fell apart like you mentioned it was just hit after hit and rios none of his runs were earned so he still has a three era or excuse me a zero era but gave up a couple of runs and as i mentioned is going to be a mop-up guy man so overall though getting swept by the best team in baseball we can't say we're super surprised but having said that obviously disappointment and frustration with what happened and the phillies clearly need to improve the ball club in more than one spot I think Jay Bruce adds a little bit, who they added to add to the outfield, allowing Kingery to maybe play a little bit more third base, and you got that power lefty to kind of rotate in, but they can't be done there. No, they need arms, they need bullpen arms, they need a starter. What starters do you trust right now in September? For playoff baseball, you need three starters, okay? And you got Nolan Arietta, who you're going to run out there. Right. We don't have a third right now right. that you can trust. So let alone a fourth, if you extend into the next series or two, yeah, you can kind of you know mix and match a couple together there, maybe get four innings out of somebody. But we clearly need that third guy that is not there, whether that's Madison Bumgarner from San Francisco, Zach Grinke from Arizona, Mike Miner from the Rangers. There's a handful of names. But without one of those guys, yes, we may win the division or make the playoffs, but the expectation cannot be the World Series. Correct. And yet, yeah, you're right. In game four, you could go a pavetta Ikoff combination in right. a playoff series. Out of those names, who would you like to see them attack most? If I had to choose between the three of them, Bumgarner being a rental kind of scares me because there's not that long-term, long-term longevity with him. Granky's going to cost a lot of money, and he's 36. Those two have a lot of experience in the playoffs so big game pitchers right there man minor you like you said is gonna be a lot of money but he's the lefty so that's sure something we need so i think i would probably lean i would probably go cranky bumgarner or minor i'm okay with that obviously a lot of it depends on the price in the prospect or right. the return they would all vary in fluctuation and you know you got to trust clentact at this point um, because the deal with Jay Bruce only paying him, I think it's three to five million out of like the 30 he's owed. And we did give up a former fifth round pick, but he's still in low A ball. So he doesn't fit into the current window. And you're going to replenish that by the time we get to that type of level. So you trust him to make a move or two. But I agree with you. I think they need a starter and or a bullpen piece. But I foresee Klintak being aggressive. And I think he's showing that with the Jay Bruce trade that, hey, this clearly isn't good enough and we're going for it this year. So I think that's going to be interesting to watch over the next right. couple of weeks. I can't see Phil Goslin coming up to bat in crucial situations as a pitch hitter anymore. Depth is certainly an issue for the Phils, but they'll continue to address it. And they have already. And rumors of potentially some traction sooner than later because if they do get a rental like Bumgarner, you get an extra four or five starts out of them if you use the trade now as opposed to July 31st. But this is the Philly Fanatic Podcast. We're coming to you after a sweep out in L.A. And some of the audio here is a little bit jumbled because we tried something different with the Skype. The Skype bounced around a little bit. So now we know some things we got to work out, some kinks to iron out along the way. But we appreciate you listening, as always, and uh, follow us out there on all the social media platforms. Too Close to Call, I am Miho with my co-host, Pax. We appreciate you guys listening. Later, guys. Peace. Miho to pit. Swing and a miss. Stuck him out. The Philadelphia Phillies are 2008 World Champions of Baseball. Save opportunities and let the city celebrate.